Hello and welcome to the RAST Network. What you're about to hear and see is limited to general financial information only. Please be sure to speak to your financial planner or refer to our financial services guide available at rask.com.au slash FSG before acting on the information. Hello and welcome back to the Australian Finance Podcast. I'm your host, Kate Campbell, and I'm here with the wonderful behavioural economist, Evan Lucas. Hello, Kate. How are you? I'm going to do this yeah. because... Let's talk about the massive elephant in the room. This is our last brain hack. Yeah, very sad. Very sad because you are off to the wonderful world of new adventures. So it is sad to see you go. It's been fantastic to do. This will be the 16th episode we've done with them, but also all our episodes before. So before we go any further, thank you so much for allowing me to sit here and gas bag about absolutely everything and anything, but also that I wish you all the best for the future. I know we will remain in contact, but um, can't wait to go out with a bang on this one because it's going to be our last brain hacks that we do. I mean, we've covered everything and anything over the last 16 episodes of brain hacks. We have, and there are many more things into the future that we could do, and I'm sure we will find a way to do it. If you do, therefore, listen to this, want to find out more, don't hesitate to write in. We will still find ways to get to you, but let's get on with it because I think it's a great topic to finish brain hacks, which, which is have I learned enough about money yet? Love the fact that it realistically, that's a rhetorical question. What I really wanted to talk about today to wrap everything we've discussed about brain hacks and all those behavioral biases and things that can trip you up when investing is that big gap between learning and taking action. Yeah. And the number one thing I really want listeners to take away from years of listening to the finance podcast, coming to RASC events and courses is to take action. And it doesn't matter if it's a really tiny step, but those small steps that you take action on build and build over time. Yeah. So one of the big things that you and I have spoken about over the 16 episodes that we harp on and off sort of jumping in and out of it, the word that we use is habit. So that as Kate just said, with those small things, small things build habits. And once you get into a habit that are good or bad, doesn't matter, you keep them. So the small steps builds habit. And we've used the analogy, or at least I did, many, many times before, which is you can't just go out and run a marathon off the bat. You've got to start small and build up to that big event. It's the same thing. The big event being financial autonomy, if that's what you want to call it, or having the ability to do what you want, when you want, whatever you know thing that we've used with regards to buzz terms, singers, acronyms, everything in between. Whatever that is, that's the take action because the take action leads to habit. Habit leads to constant action. Constant action will lead to whatever that goal happens to be because this is the other thing is that we've tried to get to the idea that behavior will get you to your goal. You can, I mean, I work in economics and all that kind of stuff. I can sit there and tell you all the numbers you want, but every single time you will glaze over because it doesn't matter to you, but the behavior does because that is something you can change yourself. So For this, we wanted to basically go through and look at all of those things that we've gone through over the last 16 episodes, what really do and don't hurt you, what do and don't lead to certain actions, et cetera. So for you first, it's one of your favorite terms, I know that, go through analysis paralysis. Why and have you learned enough yet on analysis paralysis to say that you can, inverted commas, conquer it? Well, Evan, while I still look at Netflix on the weekend and uh, spend 10 minutes browsing different shows and debating with my sister, she's seen that one, so we're going to have to watch something else and she doesn't want to watch this type of show and I don't want to watch this type of show. So I don't think I've fully cured analysis paralysis in my life. It definitely pops up from time to time. But when it comes to investing, that's somewhere that I think I have cured analysis paralysis, at least to the most point. And that is because I've made decisions regarding my investment, I've automated them, and I'm not looking for the next shiny thing all the time. And that can be the real trap when you are listening to a lot of finance content. At the very beginning, you're going to see so many different options. But at the end of the day, you're going to have to just pick a few, do your research, make the best decision you can with the knowledge you have at the time, and then go with that. And at the end of the day, if you decide in a year or two time that you don't like that brokerage account and you want to choose another one, you can transfer your holdings across. There's lots of options when it comes to your money. And I really want people to not get held back by analysis paralysis. Yeah. So my argument on the way I look at it is that 
I say that you never stop learning. So I openly tell people how old I am now. I'm now 40. And I Congrats. Would, Thanks. Um, I got here. I've survived. I'm still- <laughs> You arrived on this earth? I did. I, I've been doing this now and it scared the hell out of me. I've been doing this for almost 20 years. Um, and I would argue that I probably believe that I know less now than I did when I first started. And that's also pretty natural. The overconfidence thing is a huge thing. It's a thing we've gone through on this podcast, but- Overconfidence also means that if you can start addressing that, you will come back to that point of view. So learning never stops. But the other way I would look at it is perfect is imperfect. Because if you want perfect, as Kate just said, with choosing a brokerage account or choosing the right stock, choosing the right ETF, it doesn't matter. I don't care what vehicle it is. It's not perfect. None of them are. Because if it was, every single player out there would be in that perfect scenario. And even the greatest investors on the planet, Warren Buffett, people like him, openly admit they don't have a perfect system, but they have a system that can get over all of the issues that you can easily find to stop you, Kate's analysis paralysis, or loss aversion, or overconfidence, simplification, whatever terminology you want to use. That, I think, is what I've learned. The learned that I have known is that there are many plethora ways of stopping yourself, except perfect is imperfect. That, I think, is the biggest takeaway from all of this, because as soon as you don't act, as we've said at the start of this and said through the entire series, that'll lead to actually worse outcomes. And again, go back, cash versus any form of other asset that appreciates, you, you, you're dead in the water. And so, yeah, perfect is imperfect. And one of the other things that have popped up time and time again over the years when we've spoken to people at events is that they're waiting to be more confident about investing and their knowledge and their skills before they start. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, we become confident through action. Confidence isn't something that we can build up purely theoretically. It's something we have to build through taking action. And it feels scary because when we look at finance, we think it's complicated and That's what the industry wants you to think because there's lots of money for people to make. But at the end of the day, it doesn't have to be complicated. It does take your time to get your head around it. But I think that everyone has the capacity to manage their own finances. And yes, they'll see a financial advisor where appropriate and accountant, but you have the skills to understand the basics. Yeah. And so that next question that brings up the one that you and I also love to talk about, which is wealthy v. rich, because... You normally, with that first point, that underconfidence, that stuff that makes it hard is that you see the rich, you don't see the wealthy. So you see those people that are making incredible amounts of money that have lots of money, and I deliberately use have lots of money. They must be therefore doing something that's incredible, taking risk that's incredible, etc. That's something I can't do. Rich people are not wealthy people. They're not the same. Remember, wealth in what we always talk about. Wealth is having financial autonomy. It's where you don't have to think about your money. You don't have to have that fear or that underconfidence about You've what you're doing. You've got that emergency fund. You know you're going to be okay if an unexpected expense pops Correct. up. Correct. That gives you wealth. That gives you autonomy. That's, that's not just the mindset difference. It's also around understanding that you are you, I am me, as I always sort of talk about in my world, is that a rich person is them. Who cares? So what? Don't worry about them. You're running your own marathon. You're running your own race. You're running your own money autonomy race. And as soon as you start thinking about my wealth is the ability to do my goal, whatever that happens to be, as Kate just said, it could be your emergency fund. It could be finally getting your finances just in order, right? Rather than you know cycling through debt on a constant basis of personal levels. Whatever it is, that's the wealth, right? So all of a sudden you've gone from being basically income- dependent, most likely asset poor, to having both. And even if it means that your asset poor goes from being negative to just neutral, that's the step. Then you are becoming wealthy because your money no longer is just sitting there working against you or ticking over a level that creates levels of anxiety that goes back into the personal, actual physical attributes of of mindset and et cetera. As soon as you don't have to think about your money, that's when I would argue you're starting to become wealthy. And whatever your wealth is then is defined by you. 
not by that person that you see on Instagram or that you see in the media that is inverted commas rich. Promise you, being rich is not the answer. <laughs> more money, more problems, as they say, Ev. Yeah. Um, and I think that's what we've tried to highlight with all of this. I mean, I, again, when you go back, I remember we had some questions coming about, you know, what I would do, what you would do. And we did get, I got some pushback on some of those questions. Like, you know, how has he done that? We've talked about that you shouldn't do it. That's me, right? I can do that because I've had 20 years experience inside this and I would do what I know I can do. I don't want to promote that because that's me and this is what I do for a living. It's how I do it. But that, don't, don't listen to that. That's not what we're here. It's not what this whole series has been about. It's about defining that wealth to be rich. Your wealth is all that matters, no one else's. And when I say your wealth, family, right? So if you're in a couple, if you're in a family, that, that, that's, that's your group wealth. Start thinking about it as a group. Yes, you can hybrid it. We've talked about those things before as well. All that kind of stuff. But it's, it's for you and what I do, what Kate's done and will do into the future. They're our things. That's how you've got to come out of this series is going, I know my fear. I know my lack of confidence. I know my aversions. I know they're there. I'm never going to completely 100% conquer them. But if I can address them and start over taking my bad habits with forming new good habits to slightly counteract against them or at least move them into the good side of my behavior reactions rather than the bad side. Mm. And that's what I wanted to talk about with that idea of are you stuck in learning mode where you just keep learning new things but you'd never take any action or yeah. start applying them. And I think the most important thing with finance because it can seem confusing and complex is that you need to learn a bit about savings accounts, then sort out where you're going to put your money. Yeah. Then you learn a bit about super, then you investigate your super and find out where it is. You learn a bit about tax, you do your tax return. So I think finance has to be an applied thing. And so if you're listening right now and you've been learning about money for a year or two and you haven't made any changes, I'd take this as a gentle encouragement just to think, what's one thing I can do today, this week, this month, this year to improve my finances? Can you write it down in your notes app now and just take action because it's so important that you don't look back in 10 years and go, I learned all this stuff about money, but I never did anything with it. Yeah. And so this also gets into diversification, right? So I'm going to get really technical here, but that's fine. So, you know, you think about modern monetary theory. Oh, you, you went right to it. I went right to it, right? So you think about somebody like, you know, Harry Markowitz who came up with modern monetary I theory. I commonly think about him. Yes, all the time. Um, diversification about all that kind of stuff. Dial it down. And what I mean by that, Kate just went through your diversification of money a touch, money touch is really large. Your taxes, your income, your business account, your personal account, your term deposit, your superannuation. That's all actually a diversification of incomes. And if you can start looking them as one, it can actually kick you past that learning about everything but not actually taking action. Because all of a sudden you can look at your superannuation and go, oh, I've been working for 10 years and 11% of my income now or back in the day, you know, 9% of my income has been going in there for 10 years. I actually have savings. Okay, you can't touch to your 65, but that's a good thing. Because again, you've got that money set aside. My tax returns actually money can I do without putting that back into my daily transactions and actually put that towards you know, a savings account or hopefully taking that next step and going into an investment account? That My super and my investment account all of a sudden become, adverted commas, a diversified form of your overall assets. And what the studies show is that when you can see the whole rather than the pieces – you start to actually appreciate it more. Gets back to that whole new thing that's coming up, and I do really love it, which is gratitude. And one of the most famous quotes by Michael J. Fox with that is that with gratitude, optimism and opportunity is, is ever present. So as he talks about, is that as soon as you start being gratitude for what you have, abundance becomes more and more, and you'll see your money in the opposite. You'll see your money as abundant rather than being scarce. And that's also the discussion that we've had through these 16 episodes is, that's the other part of this is that we see each other's things in pieces in silos rather than looking at the whole because the whole will change the whole perspective. So Evan, I think we need to both answer this question. Have you learned enough about money yet? I, look, 
for the, for everybody out there, yes, clearly I have. I mean, it's it's what I do and have. My answer though is I will never stop knowing enough because I will never know everything. And I would argue, you know, even a surgeon has to constantly keep learning, even though they may be able to completely, you know, rewire your whole body. It's not the point. They know that they are and have got enough money and knowledge with what their space. So yes, I do. But as soon as you also, in my world, accept that that's it, you'll stop and go backwards. So you're always improving, I think is the word. Again, I want to go back to my analogy I've used through all 16 episodes, the marathon. You can do the marathon, but you can always keep improving. You can always get slightly fitter. You can always get slightly better. And that drive, for me anyway, for my personality, is what keeps me going. So I'm always learning. Yes, I've learned enough, and I know I do, but I don't want to believe that that's it. It's got to be more. That's me. You? I've learned enough to work towards my goals, put systems in place and have it running in the background without it something that I need to worry about or think about every day. I've got the emergency fund set up. I know where my super is. I'm ticking away towards my goals, even though I might be investing less this year. I've got those systems in place so I can scale them up when I do have more income in the future. I'm always going to be curious, but it's not it's not anymore the thing that I think about all the time. Mm -hmm. That is a beautiful ending. Kate, it has been an utter pleasure, as I said at the start, to do these 16 episodes with you, the 20 before. I am so impressed to see what you've done with Rusk over the last period of time that you've been here. I love what you do with podcasting. I hope everybody out there is really appreciative of what Kate's brought to the podcasting world in Australia, particularly in finance, over the last five years. Plus, we wish you all the best. And again, thank you so much for being part of Brain Hacks and we hope you out there loved it and we hope to do something similar into the future. Oh, thanks, Evan. And I'm sure you'll hear from Evan with Owen in future podcast episodes. Wonderful. Well, thank you everyone for listening to Brain Hacks now and over the past 16 episodes. We'd love to hear what you think. And if you want to talk more about behavioral finance, jump over to the RASC community. The link will be in the show notes. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching this video on the RASC network. While you're here, don't forget to like and subscribe so you can get videos each and every day on business, finance, investing, and so much more.